there are such ignorant Buddhas. Because there are two ways of the scale you can go. Either you go up to the highest level of consciousness, or you can descend very low, very low, and just be ignorant, just playful. Yeah, because it's fun, perhaps, <laughs> to experiment something that you have never seen before, that you are not, uh, it's n- it's, it, that is not yourself. Yeah, something new, adventure. Just like uh, sometimes we go into the uh, the mountain, huh? huh? We walk into the wildness, and uh, there are tigers, elephants, bears, lions, uh, panther, ooh, bandits. Sometimes you know, robbers, everything. But we like it. Some people like it, or some people climb the Mount Everest. You know, there's nothing up there, only snow and garbage. I put some people like to climb up and just have a look. Yeah, when you come up there, there's nothing there to look. Yeah? It's just like a Colorado. <laughs> yeah, the top of the Colorado mountain, or top of Germany mountain, which you have experienced already. Well, people like it, they, they, they must see it, because it's a, supposed to be the highest mountain. And then so they went up there and spent a lot of effort and time and money, holiday time and energy, and also litter a lot of garbage around there, and then they climb down again. Ah, some people have such hobby. Or sometimes people go, like to go to the North Pole, huh? or, or uh, the South Pole, I don't know what they're doing there, but they like it. Ah, they left their warm and comfortable home, and their children and kids and friends and uh, all the lovers and everything. They just went into the very cold and freezing zone of the end of the world, and just wandering around there, yeah, hoping to see bears. <laughs> Probably they're fed up with human beings, they want to see bears. Uh, so uh, for, the, uh, for the Buddhas, hmm? for the uh, God consciousness, can divide it, consciousness, consciousness can divide it into different parts, and house into different homes, just like me, yours, body. And then, and then they can do all kind of things using using this kind of instrument, the body, to experiment all kind of bad things or good things, according to human standard. To the Buddhas, there's nothing as bad, nothing as good. If a Buddha or God still think there's something good, something bad, then there's no God and it's not a Buddha. Uh, but nevertheless, to us and to many others lesser beings. There are things such as bad and good, as devils and angels, because the, the, the bad things are the things that make us very uncomfortable and lowly, lowly and inferior. And the good things are the things that make us feel uplifted, happy, carefree and liberated. So we label them good and bad according to our emotion and feeling and according to how we feel about it. You understand what I mean? So as the divided Buddhas, you know, like us, huh? and uh, we try to get it. Actually, we are not divided at all, at all, never have been divided, and never have been born or died. It's just that our spark of the consciousness, you know, <laughs> or the consciousness uh, just uh, try to grasp some of the instrument, yeah? uh, and then uh, play a different part or experiment different things. Just like me here, look, uh, the whole body is mine. Eh? But then um, I use my right hand to grab a book, uh, or the left hand grab a book, and the right hand I grab a pen, uh, and uh, the right feet I do something else, maybe scratching the left feet, uh, <laughs> or doing something, you know, or kick somebody uh, for fun, and uh, maybe writing something like this while I'm talking to you, I still can write, you see, my mouth is talking, my ear listening to your laughter or your response, and my right hand writing, my left hand holding a book, etc., etc. So actually, the whole thing is God. We, you, I, the good, the bad, the ignorant, the enlightened, all God, just each one function differently according to the dictate of the Godhead, which is ourselves also. <laughs> and my brain is also me, huh? right? You cannot separate my brain away from me, and then it still functions. Uh, it will not. So whatever it is, it's me. 
whether I tell my hand to slap somebody or str- or just uh, caress somebody, it is all me too. It's my brain who dictate. Mm. But uh, you see, like uh, some of the uh, God who divided or who had uh, uh, had hold of some of the instruments, such as some body, yeah, a body like this, and then try to experiment with that body something else. Something is not very godly, yeah, according to our understanding or standard. Something is away from God. Something is opposite to God, and that is when we call that person devil. Otherwise, there's no such thing as a devil or Satan, 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 Satan uh, the which exists. There's no such thing. We create everything through our experiment with our bodies and our mind as a computer. But still, they are God, they are Buddhas. So in the Bible, there is a story as a fallen angel. Hmm? There is no such thing as fallen angels, because we are all our fallen angels. That's why we are here. And we try to climb up, some of us. Some still like hang around in the middle, some like to even uh, climb down to the tunnel, you know, the infinite, infinite uh, uh, bottomless pit hole, and trying to see what's going down there. Try to do something with it. Yeah? Some people like to go up, some people like to go down. Some of us would never dream to go to Mount Everest, even just for one second. What for, anyhow, right? Couldn't even meditate there, it's too cold. <laughs> Try to keep yourself warm, it's already troublesome. So, but to some people, it's their life, you know? It's their life. If they don't go there, they feel itching everywhere. Oh, they can't bear it, you know? So on a one day they have to go. Mm. So or some people like to go to the North Pole, South Pole, things like that, to experiment the end of the, the plan, planet. Huh? They just like it. Some people go to African jungle huh? and play with bears or <laughs> monkeys. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, one of the lady scientists, she's a doctor or something. Oh, she has been in uh, Africa for a long time. This you know in your TV. And all she has been wanting is just to touch the big gorillas, the black one. And so she, every day she tried to ambush, you know, to hang around and to sneak around them, you know, and to go near or go far depends on situation. Until one day she can touch the fur of the gorilla. Oh, that was her happiest moment in her life. It's just like you come here and looking at these small gorillas, and <laughs> you like it's golden gorillas. <laughs> and, and if you can touch my feet or my hair, oh, that's the happiest day of your life. And so I think it's very much similar. Hmm? So don't think I feel very proud of your love or your effort or anything. I consider I'm just one of those gorillas, but not in Africa, that's all. If I live in Africa jungle, maybe you don't take so much effort to go there and try to touch my fur, because I don't have one. Maybe touch my hair, but not my fur. <laughs> but you see, even the effort that you use to come here to see me, I appreciate it, but it's no big deal. Some people spend all their life just to uh, st- stake around the gorilla, huh? Stalked, yeah? Stalked, yeah, allow, around the gorilla until they can get near or be one with them. So what's the big deal that you spend all your time come here and try to touch my feet? <laughs> huh? And I have to wash them every day in case, <laughs> just in case you happen to touch. <laughs> You see, that's why I have to change all the time. Huh? I have to change my socks and my shoes. I might just want to change the whole outfit. Because if you change <laughs> different shoes, need different outfits, <laughs> different socks. Huh? <clears throat> yeah, so what I mean is we, we humans look alike with some uh, very basic instinct, but we develop differently. Even though we are all Buddhas and we have Buddha natures, there's nothing but Buddha inside you and around you. Just like a cup put into the river, to isolate it, some water in the river, that's all. As soon as the cup is removed or broken, <laughs> it's the same like before. 
It has never been anything different than that. So now, uh, uh, the initiates are like the one who make a hole in the cup. You know what I mean? So even though we still look like we have a cup, you know, we are inside the cup, but we have a hole, you know, both holes. So the water can come in and out with us all the time. So even though we are concentrated in a cup, we are connected with the whole river, and we are actually the river water now. But it's just the time has not come for the cup to be broken. Soon it will. Of course, then then other other cups who has not yet the hole in the in their cup, you know, we say, oh, that's strange. I have the hole in your cup. <laughs> you don't look like us. You must be something terrible. Uh, fancy have the holes in the cup. <laughs> then what is use having a cup? You know, uh, thing like that. But our cup purpose is not the same anymore. We still have the cup for the sake of, you know, identifying ourselves with other cups. But our purpose is not to use a cup anymore as a holder of the water, but just to function, you know, apparently in this world. Ah. So let's come back to the Buddhas, because the God consciousness are free. So sometimes the God consciousness try to create different things and going down in the scale or go up in the consciousness. For us now, we are going up. Because from the middle to the up, everything is happy, light. The, the upper we go, uh, I mean, the higher we go, the lighter, the more happy, the more relaxed, the more li liberated we feel. And that's why eventually all separated, uh, divided part of Godhood must try to go back up, upstairs. Because now are the different kind of function. Mm? Just like from our waist down of our body, the function is different, right? Like the, the bowel is for digesting, the liver is for um, filtering the, the toxin, and the, how say the, uh, the how say, passing water and uh, uh, passing, uh, how say, uh, uh, how say, excrement system. Huh? Uh, and the legs are to walk, thing like that. Okay, but from the ways up, are a better department. Even though it's all ourselves, yeah. There are heart, you know, to function. If without heart, it's terrible. <laughs> and uh, lung, oh, very important. So we can take in the air. We live every day because we take in the air, and the heart have to pump the blood all over the body. Without these two organs, uh, we die immediately. Uh, so that's the that's that, and then the throat hmm? to take in the food nourishment for all the body uh, organs, and the the, the tongue just mm, to taste good. That's a pleasure, you see. So there are different things. Huh? If you keep uh, concentrating down on the body of yourself, then you cannot enjoy the food. Huh? You, if you don't use the tongue to taste and don't use the mouth to eat or communicate with each other, then there are you missing a lot. Yeah, because you have to communicate with each other through language and through eyes contact, and then taste the food, the delicious uh, fragrance and aromas of uh, the kingdom of the vegetable and fruit. So that we will feel good. See that? Ah. Now similarly, huh? If we keep going down in the scale of the creation, then we experience more darkness, more misery, more cruelty, more suffering. Until we had enough, we cannot bear it anymore, so we don't want to climb down anymore, and we don't want to create any more situations so that we fall down again. Now we try to create something so that it will lift us up and then go into the upper consciousness, then we will feel better. And the higher, the better, the higher, the better, and then we say, oh, yes. Yes, now, now that's, that's that. That's the way it should be. Oh, now I want this. I don't want that again. I don't want the lower and dark and, and, and suffering anymore. I want to go up, 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 up. And so after initiation, after you meditate more and more, you feel light-hearted, you feel free. You don't care much about your material comfort anymore. Just a minimum we do. Uh, so you come here, you pitch a tent with camp, you camp, uh, you fight with the, the weather, <laughs> with the flood and the mosquitoes and everything, 
But it's all right because your heart feels good. You feel good. You feel at home. You feel this is the simple life that you want, even though your karma do not yet allow you to come and live permanently like this. But sometimes you already feel good for one or two weeks or month. You already feel good. You feel, oh, this is the kind of life I want. This is the carefree style that I always wanted, and this is what good for me. And so you like it, and you begin to taste what is like to be near God. What is like to be back to the Godhood? What is like to become God again? Slowly and slowly, you like it, and I say, wow, this is it. And stupid, you have left all this before. <laughs> You should have enjoyed all this, but you deny it, so that you can taste it again. Because you live in luxury, in a God kingdom, you don't know anything else. You don't know what God is. Just like you live in a man island, you never know what woman is, until you saw one. And you say, hmm, it looks different, huh? <laughs> yeah, this is definitely not us, huh? Uh-uh. Yes, 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 yes. It's just like the Cambodian people also, huh? They have never seen such an unconditional, loving group like us. So when we come, they begin to realize that we are different. Huh? Before they don't see it. Before there are so many tourists who come and go here. Huh? There are a lot of Asian people, Chinese people living around, but they don't realize there are such people at all until we came. Because we are really different. We have holes in our cups, <laughs> and they don't have. <laughs> but don't try to tell them the difference between us, because they don't know. If you tell them the difference between us, it's just the holes <laughs> in the cups, and they will think you're not. In this world, you don't do this kind of thing. In this world, you go out, climb up the position in the society, make money, the more the better. Go in a big car, you know, bodyguards and all that. Yeah? Have your private airplane. Then people think, yes, see, it's normal. <laughs> yes, yes. Actually, the first time I came to, uh, not, not the first time I came to the United States, first time I met my family members, one of my niece you know, asked me, Do you have your private airplane? <laughs> That's the first thing she asked me. I said, I'm sorry, my child, I don't have it. So she was a little disappointed. I don't know how much, but it looked like she's disappointed. <laughs> like my aunt isn't that great after all, you know. Not as she thinks I was. Yeah, I feel a little embarrassed to tell her that I don't have, but it's the truth. I cannot tell a lie. I wish I could tell her, oh yes, I have one at least or two or three, like every other master, <laughs> some of other masters, you know. Because some of the masters, you know, have a lot of cars. Rolls Royce or, or airplane, private, at least private jet, and, and she has that in her mind. So she wants to come and, you know, and ask me, because she wants to be proud you know, of her aunt that she made it, you know, <laughs> that her aunt made it. But she doesn't know. All my money goes into different countries. Yeah, it's all right. I don't need a private airplane. What for? There are so many plans around the world. Why should I take one when I can take hundreds? Huh? <laughs> yeah, all, all air company belong to me. She doesn't know this. <laughs> I forgot to tell her. <laughs> yeah, isn't it not so? Whenever I want to take any airplane, I just take it. <laughs> I just go and, yeah, and sit there, and nobody can throw me out. See that? So that means Air Cambodia, Air Thailand, Air America, Air France, Air Russia even, I took them all. <laughs> Whenever I need I, any of them, I just take them. Depends on where I want to go, see? Isn't that greater than to having just one airplane? Right? Just Ching Hai Air? <laughs> uh, but uh, I didn't have so much time to explain to her. Yeah, I was very, uh, feeling a little embarrassed to disappoint her, so I was kind of speechless. I saw her disappointment. Yeah, and I know how she felt. I wish I could have told her something else, make her feel better. But because it was the first time I saw them for many, uh, nearly thirty years, I was speechless. You know, I wasn't more also emotionally happy. 
and I didn't think of airplane at that time. <laughs> I have forgotten, and uh, all my wit and my humor is gone. Yeah, I was so emotionally happy and was speechless. But if she came and asked me now, I'd tell her. <laughs> you have helped me to tell her that I have all the airplanes in the world, yes, including all the UFO too. <laughs> Yeah. When the le- whenever they let me use it, I will. <laughs> the UFOs. <laughs> yes, yes. Because uh, we are a little different, really. Huh? Because we are so uh, so much more detached than uh, many of the people in this world, and the way we do things are very simple, and carefree and unconditional. So the people of the world are not used to this kind. Yeah, you understand. Mm, not used to this kind. So that's the difference between uh, mm, many people. If we use our creative thinking and our uh, creative energy for the good purpose, then the world go up and up, 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 in all kind of development and all kind of benefit. If we use it in a lower down scale, then wow, we also create a very, very big kind of negative force, and that can destroy humankind. Or the planet. That's why we had a lot of atom bombs, war, huh? kills millions of people, uh, a lot of uh, very terrible uh, chemical and uh, germs weapons, huh? which also uh, create a lot of suffering for, for mankind and, and other living beings as a whole. Because some of the Human beings prefer to use their genius in that way. It's a pity, but okay, the world is like this. So it's not that we come here and, and try to expect that everybody become as good as a Buddha or as angels or as ourselves, but our purpose is to show how good we are. That's all, and no, no, nothing else, nothing else in in return. That's our duty. Always have to show how good you are, how good we are. That's it, and not to uh, to to wait for the other to show how good they are, or whatever they are, they are. Hmm? Our purpose, our duty, and for our own good, we always have to show that we are good. That's the part that we must show. That's the part that we must develop, and that's the only choice if we want to be back to the kingdom of God and be God-like, or return to be one with God. If that is our purpose, we must always be good, be noble, and disregard of what other people uh, show, how, how they show themselves, yeah? how they choose to represent themselves at that moment or any moment of our life or our encounter. Now you understand huh? why the world is like this because of the choices that people made, and the choices that we made in the past life too, and some of the choices we don't make. We are indecisive. Indecisive? Yes. And that's also my trouble. If we see something good, and we have the urge inside to change, and we don't do it, that also creates karma, bad karma. Eh? And we also have to partake of the consequence of that, of our indecisiveness, of our weakness, that we see good things, we see the thing that we should defend, that we should change, and we don't, or we did not. So it's not only our action brings consequences, our inactions also bring consequences. Anything in this world, whatever you think, wherever you walk, you breathe, and you turn around, you talk, everything brings some result, bad or good, depends on the cause, yeah? depends on how you think and how you react or how you talk. Okay? So we have to always uh, be good, and think good and talk good, so that the consequence in the future will be good, or at least less bad, or at least neutral. That's why we always have to recite the Buddha's name, the good, the holy names, so that remind ourselves of this holy and higher quality of the creation. 
until we became one with God, or go back to the master's house, be a master of ourselves. And that is the place where we can feel eternal happiness, and because we already know ourselves as what we are, so we have no need to make trouble and create bad things again. <laughs> we already finished our journey, our realization, finished the Mm, experimenting process. Then we became the master, okay? And when we know everything. Mm. All right. Uh, you have any question? No more. Anyhow, because uh, we just—I know we are so we sound a little crazy, but I don't know if anything better to do. You know, there are two choices. Either you. Go into the world and help the world. Yeah, do what they need to you to do, or you retreat into a desert or Himalaya or whatever and just meditate. Huh? Try to avoid everything together, because of the knowledge that whether you do or not do, the world still survive without you. Huh? And uh, there's nothing to do in this world because of that knowledge, but also because of that knowledge, you just do it. Because you do or not do makes no difference to you. So whatever you like to do, you do it. Okay? No big deal. No one needs you except yourself. That you want to acknowledge yeah, your own worth in the universe. And whether you have or choose to go this way, that way, your own way, and you become a very individual self. And then you have the merit to stay as a master, as an individual. Or you merge back into Godhead and became nothing like before. Just enjoy bliss, if you like. Only if you have chosen to create something new for yourself, something extraordinary, something that is not uh, from uh, books or from uh, other people's uh, knowledge and experience, but something uniquely yourself, then you earn the right to stay individually or as a master. Understand that? That is when you became Buddha, individual Buddha, ah, even though you have been a Buddha before. That's a different thing. And you can choose to stay in the fifth level to be a master, a Buddha, or you choose to go higher, merge into Godhead, become like before, but with the knowledge of Self experienced during the physical journey. Ah? It's just too complicated. I don't even understand all this myself. <laughs> just whatever the, he told me to say, I just say it. Okay? Like taking dictation. Mm. Just repeating. <laughs> ba ba ba, you know? Open mouth, open and close, you know, according to inspiration from heaven. I don't also understand. I don't care to understand all this complicated thing. What for, you know? I don't even need to make myself a master or nothing. Yeah, I'm contented just to be this. <laughs> huh? Okay, no question, huh? Mm. Last night I wanted to meditate with you, and then after that I wanted to talk to you. But so many people make noise, you know, and it's very uh, disturbing, and they scare all my inspiration. They frighten them away. So try not to make noise during meditation hours. I told you already that the stones are put in there for purposes, so that you sit still like a Buddha in that temple over there, <laughs> not even moving your lips. Because if you move, it becomes <laughs> And people know that you are not a Buddha. <laughs> what a shame, huh? Because everybody thinks you are Buddha already. Who knows that the next one to you is not a Buddha or not, you know? Already made become Buddha or not. So better don't show your bad side. Huh? Let people think that you're a real good practitioner. Sit there, don't move. Yeah, some people don't move at all. I saw them. They sit very, very quiet and long time, you know, with their head on the shoulders of the next person. <laughs> Yeah.
Yeah. Or maybe right in the front like this. Sometimes they move just a little bit. <laughs> just a little bit like a jerking a little. It's just because the neighbors snore too loud, that's why. Uh, he was very quiet, and then some neighbors snore like, <laughs> and then he. <laughs> but it's because our practitioners are very deep in their devotion, so even the snow won't wake them up. So they just jerk a little. Then. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm very proud of you. <laughs> okay, so ciao. See you. You don't have to wear all this, okay? Yeah? Let outside people wear them. Because <laughs> you're already beautiful inside, right? Huh? Except when you have to go to work or see the president or something, and you should wear something like this. Does it look too much? Looks okay, huh? Yes. Yeah. Beautiful? Yes. Look like the way you like, huh? French, huh? Very Frenchy, huh? Or like a French fry. <laughs> Crispy. You like to stay here? All of you? Permanent? Well, be welcome. Good. But look like you feel good here, huh? Why is that? Because I'm here. Oh. I expect you to say that. Mm. Any other reason? Huh? Any other reason than that? Or oh, everybody thinks the same? You like to help the people? Oh, really? Because of energy. <laughs> oh, you feel good? Uh, we feel good anywhere, anyhow. You know? Is that right? It's not here or there, because we're always in heaven. Mm. It's just that whether we choose to accept it or not, everyone said to us that we are in heaven, huh? and heaven is here and now, or nirvana is right in front of your nose, <laughs> or maybe even inside your nose <laughs> already. But we uh, find it's very difficult to accept this, huh? because we are so clouded with uh, ignorance, with habitual fear and negative feeling and thinking. Therefore, we cannot perceive what is good anywhere or in this moment. And we were always having our preconceived 
conception about what we should be yeah, and what we should do to attain heaven. Yeah? <laughs> Therefore, we leave heaven. Because as soon as we divert our attention to something else and thinking that we must do that, do this, in order to attain heaven, at that time we focus our attention on something of no heaven. Understand what you mean? And then you leave what you already have <laughs> or what you already are. But most of the time we do that. And that's why we cannot feel that we are in heaven. So if you concentrate the way you do right here, yeah, the way our brother just mentioned that the energy here is good, it's because you concentrate, <laughs> just because you're aware of the heaven within you, or of the heaven that is already here, any time, any moment. The only time we don't experience heaven is that when we concentrate on something else, which is not heaven. Yeah? Like the neighbor, what, you know, doing what, or some negativity around us. Of course, we are bound to be noticing these things, unless we are in one of the stage that we cannot even notice anything. The time will come for some practitioners that you, you only experience heaven and nothing else. And then you even forsake your body function, your mental state. <laughs> You're always in bliss. And that's why some of the practitioners in the Himalayas or elsewhere, in remote area or in some other places, see, uh, in such a stage as the, an in extreme um, realization, some people would just uh, pass out. You know, or lay there uh, unconsciously, but still breathing, and then also cannot uh, feel the function of the body. Some of the people in some extreme time of uh, samadhi, they just lay there unconscious for some time, for many months, until the body, you know, kind of uh, uh, deteriorated sometimes, and uh, so very uh, uh, painfully they wake up and realize that this is not the way. And then they chose to be moderate huh? uh, and be in the middle way, the way the Buddha did. Huh? And that's how, that's how they, um, they come to cope with the physical life again. Otherwise, sometimes if you are too to absorb in the power of samadhi, in the so blissful stage of uh, reality, and then you, you don't even remember your body exists, so you don't feed it. You don't let it have all the bodily comfort. But as long as that we are still in this world, that means we are still in the uh, uh, illusion circle of the three worlds. That means yeah, the mind, <laughs> the body <laughs> and the functioning, also the feeling. Uh, oh, the soul is still encaged in these three layers. Hmm? So we have to feed the body in order to function and to fulfill our obligation in this world. Not that any obligation awaits us, it's just that we have chosen to come here to do something, so we better do it. Yeah? Otherwise we have to come back and do it again. But there are many masters and teachers, you know, those very highly developed souls. They don't have to do anything anymore. They finish with their learning. Whatever they have set out to do or to experience, they have already done it. So they have returned to the kingdom of God, became the master, and was very already in a blissful state. But they have chosen to come back again as a messenger, eh? as a, mm, uh, I'll say, the leader of mankind. These are not uh, a lot, but there are enough around us. If we see one, we know. If we really seek one, we know them right away, because they are very selfless, and they know everything, almost at least whatever mankind requires, they know. 
and they will seldom ask questions from anybody else. <laughs> but people will come to them for questions, for answers, for the basic knowledge of mankind as well as heavenly wisdom. They will come to this kind of people. These are the chosen, the selected few, which we call mas- master or messenger of God or God man or what? The Messiah, or whatever name you call them. These are few, ah, but not that few. <laughs> uh, every time, every uh, period of time, every situation, there are always people like this, he- beings like this, very highly evolved, very noble souls who came down to the physical dimension like us, like ours, in order to lead us back into the nobility of the heavenly kingdom, to drag us out of this uh, density of matters which is created by ourselves for some purposes. But sometimes we created it (laughs) and it became too much for us. It's a function further and stronger, more powerful than we expected, and we're out of control. And these be- beings, like masters, messengers, me- messiah, must come down and help us out of the maya that we have created, of the, 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 the webs that we have entangled within. Mm. Most of beings who come down here, try to come back to the kingdom of God. And that's the purpose of all souls. That's why they came here. They came here in the no-God kind of uh, dimension, in order to recognize God, so that they can compare yeah? uh, what is a God state and what is no God state or less God state. But when they come here, it's too much. The soul is not used to it or this density all this suffering, of all this heavy and uh, dragging matter around them. So the soul is a little bit lost, say, Wow, what I do now? What I do now? It's just, uh, just like uh, sometimes the doctor gives you some vaccination eh, to uh, help you to prevent some kind of ma- uh, disease. But then the the medicine itself gives you a lot of uncomfortable uh, uh, as a disease itself, like you have fever or diarrhea or you lost your appetite and, or you lost your strength. Yeah, you feel very weak. And some of the allergy medicine also makes you feel very weak and sleepy <laughs> and cannot function. Ah, Things like that. Huh? Mm. And in some people, it reacts more because they have less, how to say, uh, less uh, immune strength than other people. Then they feel even weaker, and sometimes it's uh, uh, dangerous too. Huh? Mm. So the soul, when comes here, huh? every soul, every soul, every individual spark of uh, the divine come here for the only purpose to go back to the kingdom of God. The only purpose to come here is to recognize the other part. The only reason we came to the negative region region is to recognize the positive abode that we have left. We have to leave it in order to recognize it. That's a problem. Sometimes we don't uh, recognize our family happiness, and then we wander around outside the house like teenagers. You know, they left home and they come outside, and then they're subjected to drug dealers and to all kind of prostitution and homeless and cold and hunger and, and, and bad treatment from the people outside. Then they recognize their home is better. Home sweet home is always better. You remember Alice in Wonderland? Yeah, she wandered around. Yeah, she wished to be away from home. She disappeared from home. Which she's bored and she didn't like it. But after a while, she, she wants to come home. So all she had to say is just home, sweet home. Sweet is my home. Then she's back there again. That's the moment of realization. It's a, a children's story, but it is the journey of the soul. It's very similar to the journey of the soul. So, 
Even though we come here, we will have uh, some assignment, like someone do this, someone do that, and then we have to do some work. But these are nothing. These are not the real purpose of us to come here. But since we come here, everybody must do something. And that's a play. That's a game. So whether you help people, or you help yourself, or you're married, or you're not married, it's your own choose, chosen path to go. It's not that you're married and you're not better than the other married people, or the, 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 the you know, the, um, I say the, the, the bachelor are better than the married people. It's not that so. Just the way you have chosen to walk in order to recognize yourself again. So like uh, people uh, uh, say that you have to keep the commandments, yeah, the precepts, in order to go ha- to heaven or to go to Buddhahood. I say it's not true. Not even the vegetarian diet will keep you, we will, will uh, say send you to heaven. It's not a must. It's not an obligation. It is a signal that when you keep all these commandments, when you live according to these commandments, you have found the way home. You are on the right path. You already evolved, developed enough to come back to the kingdom of God and reclaim your own glory again. Just a sign. Just a sign. They say, ah, just like if you, uh, you graduate in college, eh? you have some diploma. Eh? The diploma is not for you. It's not an obligation for you to have but you should have it, <laughs> since you are graduating. You just do it easily. Huh? You pass the exam easily, and you got the diploma easily. Nobody forced you to have it, and even if you don't have it, it's okay. Just that means you're not graduated. So anyone within their heart, if they found themselves very uh, indifferent to the worldly success or failure, to the fame and name of the world, to the passion and love of human relationship, to everything that is important to human survival. If anyone is ignorant, I mean indifferent to all this, then they must know that they have evolved very, very far. You understand? So the the commandments or the uh, uh, precepts are not for me, forced upon you. So don't complain to me, it's too much or anything like that. It is for, even for you, you should realize again that the five precepts or the Ten Commandments, even in that matter, are not obligation from God to tell you that you must keep it or you go to hell. It's not that. You choose what you want to be. You do what you want to do. You do what you passionately want to do, because that's the only thing you must do while you are here. But remember, the real purpose, the main point in this game is to recognize who you are again, who you really are, not who you are at this moment, but to recognize the real purity, glory of the soul, of your true self, before you descend into this world. And must know that the only purpose for you to come here is to recognize the other side. Because without this negative and suffering and dark world, you cannot recognize the light that you are. Nothing to compare. And so, that's why. It sounds ridiculous to me, too. (laughs) But that's the way it is. And that's the trouble with us. So do what you do. Do whatever you like to do, to make your life more enchanting. More endurable, more endur, more yes, yes, more bearable while you are here, huh? Because since you are here, you might just well be here, huh? And do what you do, what you like to do, because if 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 you have just been given just a short period like this, hundred years, or eighty years, or sixty years, and you couldn't even enjoy anything you want to do, then it, what is the you know what? <laughs> What's a heaven, you know? <laughs> okay, okay. So, do what you want to do. Hmm? Just, you must have a choice, huh? whether you want to be this kind of person or be that kind of person, huh? and enjoy yourself. 
enjoy whatever you think is the most noble, uh, your heart most desire. Because if you still desire it, then just let it be. If you don't desire it, that means, okay, that don't interest you. Hmm? If you, uh, you compare the Ten Commandments or the Five Precepts and uh, feel that you qualify for it, yeah? everything is written there, <laughs> you can, you can keep, uh? you're up to it. Then just congratulate yourself that you have been climbing very high, you have climbed up very high level uh? and you're near home. Just like uh, you go near from America, huh? you take uh, an aeroplane here to the airport, you know, ah, I'm nearly near Master's place. Huh? And the nearer you come, the more signs of it. Huh? Like, oh yes, there's a shop over there, oh, there's a, a, a empty land, huh? <laughs> and then uh, some cows, yeah? and then a lot of soldiers, you know, walking around on the, sh- ah, on the street, ah, yes, that's my Master's home. <laughs> Uh, oh, this is my home, our home, huh? It's our home in Cambodia. Okay, just a sign that you're near there, near here. Similarly, when we're near heaven, there are signs like this. Because you will not want to steal somebody's good anymore, since you know everything belongs to you. And that you have the whole world to share with each other. Nothing belongs to really to you yourself. Then even you want to give, not to take, huh? huh? You only take what's necessary for your daily use and whatever left over you want to even share with other people because you know it's like our common kitchen, everything belongs to us, <laughs> all of us. Huh? So you wouldn't like to go into my kitchen there and steal something for yourself. Huh? You probably will do it when you're hungry, huh? when you didn't have enough lunch or you were late for lunch or you were too deep in some muddy and you know, make a lot of snoring noise during lunch time. Yeah, well, occasionally it's all right, but don't do it every day. Huh? <laughs> uh, because our kitchen staff is not very friendly when you come in, you know, after lunch <laughs> and ask them to cook extra something for you. Okay? So if you come in, just quickly get a potato or something and get out <laughs> before you get into trouble, huh? or a banana or two, okay? And get out before <laughs> trouble, you see? So even so, if you stole something in my kitchen, nobody would say anything to you, and I will not punish you because it all belongs to you, all of you anyhow. You see what I mean? So actually in this world, who stole from whom? It's all God's. Huh? But just because we make so many law and trouble, so if somebody takes some bread from you while he's hungry, oh, you beat him, you give him to the police, and that is not the right thing to do. So Jesus has said that anyone who stole for bread is not guilty. Yeah, you have to make exception, you have to understand what is what. Only when we steal for greed, huh? we kill somebody else, or we do anything just to make somebody else's life miserable because we want to covet yeah covet their 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 possession that is when we are bad when we already have enough and we are able to do something to feed ourselves but all we want is just to take somebody else's thing and that's no good hmm? otherwise everything in this world is like a common kitchen in our ashram everyone is free to take anything they wish, and contribute something so that the kitchen will always be full and plenty for anyone who comes with hunger, they eat. Yeah? But uh, it's all right if you not contribute. But in the world, some people store so much things and don't give away. That's why people steal. That's why there are so much laws that you have to keep. Uh, you cannot steal, you cannot do this, you cannot do that. But for us, we don't want to steal anymore. We just want to give, huh? because we know already the whole world is a common kitchen. Huh? The whole world is a common possession. So if everyone knows this, there's no need for communism to fight for communism anymore. Everything is common, right? <laughs> yes, yes. And everything belongs to everybody. Uh, in Sweden, there are some good law, huh? like um, if you uh, steal somebody's car, you know, and run away for some time, and if police catch you, 
then you have to pay for the petrol only, because you have borrowed the car. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Because it's still in Sweden. As long as it's Sweden, if they catch you in France, I don't know. <laughs> so that means you borrow the car, huh? and you pay for petrol, or maybe some of the damage to the car or the the tire, you know, have been a little bit thinner than before you use one millimeter or something. You have to pay a little bit more. Maybe they measure the tire, you know, <laughs> how long you you drive, and yeah, thing like that. A little bit of uh, damaging, huh? but nothing else. Yeah, or some of the Muslim country, very good law too. You know, I don't know if, if many other countries are like that, but like in Malaysia, huh? the government is uh, Muslim, you know. And uh, they build a lot of common houses to give it to people for free, or very little rent, yeah. And also, if you borrow some money from the bank, don't go to Malaysia and do this. I just tell you, it's good, <laughs> some good point in Malaysia. Uh, if you go to Malaysia, in Mal- if you're Malaysian, eh, and you borrow money from the bank there, and you couldn't pay it, and honestly could not, then you are not uh, punished or anything. You know what I mean? Yeah, because you are the brothers. If the brother do something wrong, how the other brother punish you? If he honestly cannot help it, you know, he does not try to, uh, to, to, to cheat you. But mostly people who believe in Muslim religion or truly believe in God, they would not dare to try to cheat anybody. Understand? Just like us here even, huh? They believe, you believe in God, huh? you believe in goodness. And you already passed the precepts. You don't even want to steal. You don't even want to, uh, to, to have anything to do with the neighbor's wife or husband anymore. Whatever it is, you know, you, you have enough. You, you know everything already. You know everything belongs to you. And everything belongs to God. So there is no desire in you to take everything for yourself. Because it's yours anyhow. Why you have to go and desire and put it in your pocket? What for? Huh? So like here, everything here belongs to me, I know it for sure, because I created it, I made it, huh? and all the food I bought with uh, my money for you, huh? would I come in the middle of the night to go to my own kitchen and steal a banana or something like that? Would I do such ridiculous thing? Huh? Yes or no? No, of course not. So it's not that I keep the precept here, <laughs> but it's just the state of knowing. For sure, that's all things here belong to me. So I just don't have to steal anything. You know what I mean? Hmm. Similar to every of us, if we have reached this stage of consciousness, we will not like to do anything so bad like this anymore. So the five commandments or the ten commandments or any commandments in any religions are just originally from the masters eh? or from God. That's why you say, God has given Moses Ten Commandments. You know what I mean? It's not Ten Commandments, it's the Ten Signals to know that you are near home. If you pass all these, uh, how to say, landmarks, eh? uh, then you know ah, you are home for sure. There's nothing else to doubt. Like if you landed in the Phnom Penh airport, huh? you know that's it, now I'm in Cambodia. <laughs> the whole world can argue, but I know I'm here. <laughs> That's that. Huh? So <clears throat> it's ridiculous to, to, to tell me that why I tell you five commandments or why the ten commandments too much for people. It's nothing too much. If you don't pass these exams, then just stay where you are. Know that you are still in kindergarten or still in high school. That's all. Nobody say anything to you. If you want to stay in high school, it's all right. Huh? <laughs> That's that. So, uh, but may, very difficult for the high school student to go to college, even if he wants to. Why? He's not equipped with college, uh, uh, how to say, uh, um, ability. Huh? Similarly, for many of the uh, uh, ascension beings in this world, very difficult for them to uh, follow the saintly path. So everything is difficult for them. Meditation, oh, too difficult, too long. A uh, five precept, oh, too much. Vegetarian, oh, gosh. Who can eat this? 
you know. <laughs> I thought vegetable are only for animals, <laughs> thing like that. See what I mean? Uh, so it's their choice. Hmm? They cling to uh, their choice of life and the, uh, the good experience that they think they derive from this kind of stuff. Like uh, having a, a groovy life, you know, <laughs> with a lot of passionate affairs going on all around the clock, uh, eating all this uh, bloody, you know, meat on the table, thing like that. And they think it's good. And they dare not try anything new. And then they reject anything new, telling them, nah, 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 nah. I don't believe it. And don't believe it, don't even try. Hmm? Sometimes uh, for me also, uh, like I'm used to it, one kind of food or something, and if you give me another, I, before I try it, I said, nah, I haven't ate that before. I don't, I'm not sure why I like it. I don't think I will try. Yeah. But then when I try it, hmm, I'm hooked on that and continue to eat more. Yes. Similarly, people outside, uh, they don't practice Kwaning method, they don't think of going back to the kingdom of God, they have forgotten their purpose of coming here. Because actually everything created from God is also fun. Uh-huh. So this world is also fun for them. Huh? Wow, a lot of things to, to do. Mm. So sometimes they deliberately try to hang on, you know, hang around and slow down their uh, journey back to the kingdom of God so that they can enjoy something more. But because, oh my God, just go back to God, then it's so easy, you know, <laughs> nothing else to do. <laughs> Let's hang around. <laughs> Yeah. Just like some people make a bad joke, like oh, uh, a lot of people like to go to 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 how say to to hell, better than go to heaven. And uh, the other person asks why. He said, oh, in hell there is a lot of things interesting, uh, you know, but in heaven uh, only good things. <laughs> so it depends on your taste and your choice, that you know where it's good or not, not good. Otherwise, heaven is here already, you see? For us, it's heaven. Anytime we are happy, uh, anytime we are with God, uh, we feel good. Oh, so good! <laughs> and we can't understand why somebody else don't feel good. Yeah? Now, the heaven state of, of mind is very easy to find. We just have to leave everything that is not heaven. <laughs> okay? Everything that is not yourself, then we will feel in heaven every time, anywhere. But difficult for many people because they just focus their attention to, to everything that is non heavenly. Therefore, they cannot experience heaven even though it's there. Huh? So even so, just like you, when you're at home and you have your house, you have your job, sometimes high position, and people respect you and call you boss, this, boss, that, huh? Ah, but still you don't feel good, you don't feel so at ease like here, while you sit on the floor like this, you know, so humble and, <laughs> huh? and happy, huh? and you eat uh, simple food, huh? sometimes steal something in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> but you feel good, huh? Feel good, huh? huh? So, the heaven state of mind is your own. Nobody can steal it. Sometimes they can. Sometimes they can. If the ignorant people can bother you so much, just like you're very tired, you can sleep. You s- you, you lay on your bed and you just sleep very deeply. <laughs> but the, the 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 spouse next to you, sometimes she cannot sleep. She can also drag you out of your sleepiness. Is that not so? And wake you up all together and bug you all night long. Yeah. So it is possible that even though we are in a state of heaven, if we live with people, you know, we mix with a lot of people, well, they are sleep, <laughs> sleepless, you know. They are restless in their soul. They can also make trouble for us. And that is true too. But that's the, that's the price, you know, we have to pay if we want to awaken other people and remind them of their purpose. That's why all the saints have to suffer. That's why Jesus has to suffer. Buddha suffer. 
Kong Tzu suffer. Anyone who tried to help mankind to remember their purpose on earth suffer. So it's not that you cannot, but you have to toil with them, you have to suffer with them. It's like you come inside the, 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 the sea to rescue some uh, drowning person. You sometimes almost drown or drown yourself too, huh? or exhausted, at least get wet. Uh, and exhausted when you come back into the shore with that person or with not, or that person come in and you get down. <laughs> Sometimes, yeah? so you have to be a very good swimmer in order to rescue people. But that doesn't uh, uh, make you not wet huh? or exhausted, huh? Yeah, any work <laughs> take make take effort, and uh, and 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 every uh, everything has a price. Mm. And if you come here and you, you already know the truth and the way of awakening and the purpose of this life and you don't share it with other people, you also feel bad. And that also nagging in your soul and also a kind of nuisance. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, you get sick, you feel sick, you feel bored, and you feel itchy. Mm. <laughs> yeah? And then you scratch here and scratch here, and also don't look good either. <laughs> and then finally, you say, okay, okay, let's just, you know, get out and do it. Because the, all the soul has this purpose in mind. Either he's already realized souls, or he just realized soul, or on the way to realization. They all have this duty to rekindle the memories of the other brothers and sisters about their purpose of coming back to the kingdom of God. Because that's the only purpose that why we come here. How paradoxical it seems to you, <laughs> it still is. It's still the only sole purpose of wanting to recognize the light, so come into the darkness. The only purpose of coming to the darkness in this universe is just to recognize the light that we have. That's why we create this body by our own power of creativity to, to, to condense the matter together, become one piece like this, from all billions of, 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 of units of energy, of different kind of intelligence and uh, abilities to condense together, make it become a body like this, all concentrated so that we had all the information, all the tools, all the abilities that we need in order to recognize ourselves. So <laughs> everything boiled down to this. You come here so that you can go back. Isn't that stupid? <laughs> Sounds stupid, <laughs> but that's the only thing to do here and there or anywhere. Because we have been in heaven so long, and we have everything we wanted. So we want to know what is this like about what we are having now, and what we really are now. What is it? You know? What does it mean, heaven? Huh? So you have to go down to hell to get it, <laughs> to say, oh, go, 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 no, 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 not this one. <laughs> now I know it, and okay, get, get, get me back quickly. <laughs> oh, that's what it is. Huh? But it sounds very paradoxical. But otherwise, can you imagine what else to do in the universe, except coming up and down the ladder and play fool and then go back and recognize yourself and come down and, <laughs> and suffer and come back again? Huh? Otherwise, no creation exists. Nothing going on in the universe, not even the moon, the stars, the heavenly bodies, the firmaments, the earth, the planets, all these galaxies, nothing ever come into being if we do not steer in our super-consciousness the idea of wanting to know ourselves, that nothing came into being and nothing necessarily exists at all. But so it is, as it is, that we have created, that we wanted to know, that we wanted to create. 
so that it has abundant, so that it became the universe, so that all things run according to our plan and our wish, so that we know that we have such tremendous power, that we create all this, and that we can even how say withhold and withdraw all this and go back to nothingness, go back to the bliss that it is, and nothing more. And that is the time for the end of the creation. When all the minds, all the consciousness take a rest, that is the seventh day of God's creation. That is the day when all things come back to nothing, all things come back to where it belongs and be recreated again. And everything that we have created, or God has ever created, if it's useful, if it's good, if it's the way we want it, and then it will continue. If not, then we will damage it, destroy it by some kind of mean, like death, accident, disaster, and we just disappear. You know? The body will be destroyed. It's not good function. And we create a new one and we reincarnate. That's what we say. That's why it's no good to kill without good purpose. Because we will not destroy what we create for no reason. That's why we cannot kill, because everything we create for some purposes. And if we damage it with our cause, then the whole creation is in care, you understand? Missing something. And we have to recreate it again. But the time shortage and the, the gap between the creation create a lot of cow in the universe already. So we have we will experience a lot of mishaps or mis and accident things like that. Out of this kind of uh, you say random killing, random destroying our own uh, tools and purposes. It's very complicated, huh? Is it? A little bit, huh? So what shall I do? Uh, the best thing is that I shut up. <laughs> really, really. Because I am explaining to you things that belong to the three worlds only. The word of yes and no. Hmm? The words of here and there. The word of one and two. The word of creation and... and uh, how say? Dis Destruction. Destruction. Thank you. Yes. In the absolute abode, there's no such things that we should talk like here. <laughs> we understood without spoken. We know everything already, and we are free to choose whether to come or to go, eh? to stay there or to do something else, and there are higher purposes hmm, for our life there. It's not really that boring. Because after we have attained masterhood, we are the master of the universe, consciously and unconsciously as well. Now we are only unconsciously here. You see? But once we attain masterhood, we also we have a different body and we can enjoy everything. And we decide our fate and our work and our actions and everything. And that is when we attain masterhood. And we can do it right here too, while we have this body. Because at that stage we will be aware of what we are doing. We are consciously doing what we choose to do, not dragged around by the karma or by the plan of the universe that we have forgotten we, uh, after we came into this uh, dense world of matter. Huh? After we attend masterhood, we, we, we know what we're doing, and we, have, we choose what we do. Or we know that whatever we do here is, is good, consciously. Most people, 
they came here and they just do whatever you know is there. They have to do also the same thing, but they don't understand anything about what they're doing. They cannot love what they're doing. They cannot have the joy from their work, and they sometimes hate it, and they cannot get out of it. <laughs> Or the thing that is good for them, they hate it, and the thing that's no good for them, they love. A thing like that because they're unconscious. They are not aware of who they are and the path that they have chosen to walk. They have no choice. So after we practice the Kuan Yin method, we are plugged in into our consciousness power again. We have changed even our brain cells, even our the, the the all the cells in the body. We change everything. And we change day by day, day by day, and refine it and refine it until it becomes pure knowledge, and until it became pure love, wisdom. Nothing else. So even in this bodily, you know, uh, um, existence, we can become a master too. That's what we call the living Buddha, huh? or the living God Man, or the God Man who walks among us. Or the Messiah, or the Christ. So all the master, or the so-called Buddha, you can recognize them by their nobility, by their wisdom, by their knowledge, by the way they walk their life, in beauty, huh? in sure-footedness, and in love. We have many of them around us, huh? in this world. So if we chosen to walk with one or another, it's all, all right, as long as we recognize them. And as long as purity, goodness, love and wisdom is all we wanted and ever we want, then we will recognize that person, we will encounter one, and then we will just walk the way they do. Because uh, wisdom affects each other. <laughs> we have the wisdom inside, so like two candles. Yeah? Both have the ability to burn. If one candle already light, lit and lit, light another candle, then both will light the same way. Huh? So it just, it's not that it's easy to find, uh, difficult to find a master, it's just that it's difficult to, for us to maneuver our thinking again into understanding and remembering the purpose of our life. Once we remember, nothing else to do. Just follow the footsteps of our soul. Just follow the example before us. Just go with the guy. And that's all we have to do. Everything else, just uh, by the way. Hmm? So if you go with the guy to the Everest, okay, meanwhile, you sometimes stop in the midway, you know, on the path and cook some food, huh? or uh, do some your toiletry, you know, bath yourself, clean your teeth, all the same. But the guy is always in front, and you always follow him, and you never miss anything except the mouth, except that you will go to Mount Everest, and everything else you do in between is okay. Yeah, if you encounter a girl, maybe she likes to come with you, or why not come along? Yeah, and you equip her also with everything, then you go together, and if you need to, uh, by the way, on the road, if you see a beautiful lake and you want to camp there overnight, or stay a few more days to enjoy the scenery, that's fine with the guide. That's fine. As long as we have enough fuel and food to last during the journey, it's okay with the guide. He will not say to you, why you lack your effort and why you don't run quickly to Mount Everest? What's the hurry? <laughs> What's the hurry? <laughs> okay? Right? I don't think Mount Everest ever disappear <laughs> so fast. <laughs> uh, neither God will. So thing like that, you understand? So everything we do in this world now, or ever do, or ever did, will just by the way on the road to kingdom. It's all right. Just do what you love to do. You must really love it. It might be bad according to other people' judgment, but who are they to judge you? You must know what you really want, and what really make you feel that is me. Huh? Is me. I like it. It's me. If I do something else I don't like, I suffer. You know what I mean? Unless you want to suffer for that, 
then it is your choice too. Okay, it's me too. I like to suffer when I do this. Uh, I don't like to be, do it easy. I like to uh, uh, say, die hard, something like that. <laughs> uh, chose the hard way, yeah? Thing like that. Then it's whatever you choose to do, then uh, you know it's you. Because perhaps that's the purpose of, of life. That's the path you chose, chose to walk. Huh? So no need to always think of what other, other people think, you know, except some of the tribal thing, a custom and all that. Okay, just follow it for the peace of the mind and for the sake of being in harmony with each other. But don't lose yourself to become somebody else. For example, okay, you bow to some statues huh? because of the custom. Uh, so that uh, things are in peace and harmony, you respect other people's custom. <laughs> but you cannot ever even come back to their stage of being, like believing the statue to be the real. Is that not so? Ah, oh, yes. But the other person who bow with you, he believes it. He believes the statue is for the real. You do the same thing, but you know it's not real. You understand that? So don't ever lose yourself in other people's belief and ideas and thinking. Just be yourself. That's the purpose. That's all there is. Huh? Okay, yeah. Now you can clap and go home. <laughs>